So today, let's review one of the most popular, well-known fake fragrances on the market, Fico di Amalfi by Aqua di Parma. Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. And if you are new, what I do is I make fragrance-related content. So if you love fragrances, definitely go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and also be sure to follow my fragrance Instagram page. But today we're gonna to be talking about Fico di Amalfi by Aqua di Parma. And of course, this is in the blue Mediterranean line. Now I gotta quickly shout out one of my brothers, Tyler, because he's the one that has hyped this up so much. He's a huge fan of the house of Aqua di Parma. And his words were, Fico di Amalfi is the only must have from the blue Mediterranean line. So I cannot wait to talk about it. Before we talk about the scent, let's go over some information about it. So Fico di Amalfi was launched back in 2006, so it actually has been around for quite some time now, which was surprising to me when I found that out, because for some reason I thought this was a fairly new fragrance, but this has actually been on my radar for around two years or so when I first got into the fragrance game. I did come across Fico di Amalfi, but back then, I wasn't so excited about buying more fresh summer spring fragrances because of course, if you follow my journey, I've always been more into like the woodsy, resinous, oody, tobacco, dark sort of fragrances. But lately, I've actually been on the hunt for some good spring, summer fragrances and my taste has sort of changed a little bit. Of course, I still prefer the darker stuff, but I'm definitely warming up for freshy. So I'm so happy to have this one in my collection. So for the retail price of Fico di Amalfi, you'll be able to get a 75 ml bottle like I have in hand for $137, or you can opt for the big boy, the 150 ml for $210. Now I said retail, cause I like to give you guys my, like the retail prices of fragrances, not the discount prices, because that is the genuine retail price that Aqua di Parma is gonna charge for their fragrances. If you go into like a boutique, if you go to aquadiparma.com, those sort of things and discount pricing can always fluctuate and change. So mind you, that is why I always tell you the retail price. So I did do a lot of research to try to figure out who the perfumer was behind Fico di Amalfi, but unfortunately I cannot come up to a conclusion on who was actually the nose for this fragrance. So if any of you guys actually know that's watching this, definitely leave a comment down below and let me know as well. So with all the information out of the way, let's go ahead and look at the packaging and presentation of Fico now. So taking a look at the box, of course it comes in your traditional Aqua di Parma kind of canister look that is actually made of an interesting material. It does feel pretty high quality. Of course I do have the 75 mil like I said. You have the label right here that resembles a label you will find on the bottle. This is actually an Eau de Toilette concentration which is surprising. I almost thought it would have been an Eau de Cologne for the Colonial line, but so that's nice. On the bottom you do have your barcode and batch code to authenticate your product and see when it was produced. And then when you just pop up the top, then your fragrance will just lie in kind of a generic in inner side, but yeah, it is a pretty nice box. So let's look at the bottle now. I have to say, looking at this bottle, this bottle looks so much better in person. I was actually kind of blown away. When you get some sunlight on this thing, it just looks so good like the ocean with that blue kind of gradient uh, glass bottle Aqua di Parma went for. Of course, the same label. On the bottom, you do have your sticker with your batch code and some information. Nothing on the cap. Now, the cap does not click into place. It does hold on snugly. Um, I guess you could pick it up. Maybe if you had the 150 mil, the little heavier bottle, you might want to be a little bit careful because it's not that tight. And then, of course, nothing on the inside of the cap. And you have like a, a nice finished blue, sort of different color atomizer. So, yeah, fantastic bottle. My only gripe with these uh, blue Mediterranean line bottles is the sizing because it's not your traditional 100 mil and 50 mil like the original Colonia and the higher end uh, line goes for. Rather, they did a 75 and 150. And I, I don't like that because I like to try to keep my bottles uniform, but it's not that big of a deal. The top, you have grapefruit, bergamot, citron, and lemon. In the middle, you have fig nectar, jasmine, and pink pepper. And in the base, you have fig tree, cedar, and benzoin. So let's go ahead and spray this one, test out the atomizer. And of course, I have my handy dandy test strip here. Let's see what we got with this atomizer. Decent atomizer, actually, if you heard that noise, it does do um kind of a powerful spritz. So yeah, but it's not pressurized or anything like that, unfortunately, but of course it gets the job done. So let's remind myself of the opening of Fico di Amalfi. Believe it or not, the fig is not the main player in the opening of Fico di Amalfi. Of course you would think that, but no, that's not the case. What you actually get on initial spray of this fragrance is a very 
natural, photorealistic, authentic grapefruit note that is by far one of the best grapefruits I've ever gotten my nose on, just the way Aqua di Parma. And that's actually what you kind of expect from this house. Very elegant, very classy, and just very high quality. But that grapefruit does come across very zesty and also extremely tart-like, but it does make it for a very good summer, fresh citrus fragrance. The only downside from that phenomenal natural opening of the grapefruit is that it doesn't actually last long until it kind of like fades away and lets the, the main player of this fragrance, the fig, actually come through and take center stage and shine, which actually happens in the middle. So in the middle is when you actually will get that fig, but guys, it's not a juicy kind of fig. It's more so a watery green and a very creamy fig. And the fig that actually makes its way through the composition in the middle, you're actually left with that fig for the rest of the life of the fragrance. After that opening, which does kind of start to disappear maybe after a half an hour to an hour, then the fig comes through. Now the fig actually is more of like a, um, like a fig tree. If you're walking in a fig, I guess, garden somewhere and like wherever the fig is grown, I think over in the Middle East somewhere. Imagine walking through there and you're getting the aromas of the fig. That's the kind of vibe you're getting. Very earthy, very green. Now also in the middle, what gives this fragrance a little bit more character rather than just focusing on the fig, you do get a spicy pink pepper, which does work really well alongside that, that fig green earthiness. And it just plays together perfectly, guys. The top and the middle of Fico di Amalfi is by far my favorite part of this whole fragrance because as you actually make your way into the base of it, you are still left with that fig note, but it's more so like a fig tree that has had all the figs fallen and kind of like rotten away. And you're just left with a tree pretty much. It is very woodsy in the base and extremely green and earthy. As I listed earlier, that benzoin note, I don't get any benzoin, which is unfortunate because benzoin is one of my favorite resinous notes because it does add a ton of sweetness to fragrances when it's used in a good way. In this one, honestly, I don't really get that benzoin unless it's in like the very, very, very deep dry down of this fragrance where you're just really left with the extreme skin scent. It might be there if you're nitpicking it but it's by no means a note that you'll be able to pick up and detect right off the bat from this fragrance at all. So yeah, the base is very boring. Um, it's very kind of generic and bland, I would have to say, but to be honest with you, the top and the middle is by far what makes up for the entire fragrance. I absolutely love the top and the middle of this fragrance, guys. And honestly, I don't have many fig fragrances. I think I only have one other fig dominant fragrance in my entire collection. So this one is not redundant. I cannot wait to wear this one, especially for like uh, going on a vacation to somewhere tropical, maybe beachy, just hanging out by the ocean, getting those kind of ocean breezes and things like that. This is perfect for, but we'll talk about that now. So for seasons for Fico di Mafia, what I think is best for this fragrance is by far mostly a summer targeted fragrance, which is surprising because most of the time when I review freshies, um, I usually say they're good for spring and summer, but Fico di Amalfi is targeted primarily to the summertime when it's very hot outside and things like that. This is a fragrance I will be probably taking with me on vacation when I do go very, very soon. And it will actually work perfect because it's less than 100 mil, so you can actually take it on the plane with you, which is fantastic. So I'm glad I actually got the 75 mil rather than the 150 mil for that reason, which I didn't think about at first, but it did come in handy. So for occasions for Fico di Amalfi, take a look at the kind of shirt I'm wearing right now. It's more of like a beachy kind of button up casual sh uh, short sleeve shirt. And I had to pull this one out just for the review of Fico di Amalfi because this shirt actually represents this fragrance phenomenally guys, because it does come across a very casual. You might be able to dress it up um, only if you live somewhere very tropical, very warm and something along those lines, but it's more targeted towards a casual setting. If you're just going out, laying out by the beach, uh, you know, maybe in swim trunks, maybe a shirt like this, reading a book, or just kind of relax and taking in some sun rays, that's the kind of vibe I get with Fico di Amalfi. It's not a date fragrance. It's not even a really a work fragrance or anything like that. It's not a formal fragrance, just more like a beach casual fragrance, I would say. So let's talk about gender and age groups that is best for this fragrance as well. So gender wise, guys, this is 100% a unisex fragrance. I don't see this leaning 
feminine. I don't see it leaning on the masculine side either. It's just right down the middle, a good fig fragrance that anybody can rock, a woman or a man, perfectly. Now for age groups though, this is where it is a little bit more specific rather than the gender being kind of pretty much anyone can rock it. Age groups, guys, this one does definitely lean more on the mature side of things, not youthful, it's not juvenile, it's not like a young guy kind of fragrance. Just because of that fig being earthy, green, and the fragrance and all is kind of like peppery and tart, it does lean on the mature masculine, not masculine, but more on the mature side of things. Probably anybody 30 and up is where they're kind of going for with this one. But even though I say it, uh, if you're watching this and you're like, you're my age in like the mid 20s, you can still absolutely pull this one off 100%. But when I smell this and what I picture in my head is definitely 30 and up. So performance now, Honestly, Aqua Di Parma gets a ton of hate for performance. Um, but to be honest with you, all three that I own now, which includes Colonia, which is an Eau de Cologne, the original launch that is over 100 years old. I also own Oud EDP, and now I own Figo di Amalfi. One's an Eau de Cologne, one's an Eau de Parfum, and one's an Eau de Toilette, which is kind of funny. Uh, but to be honest with you, I don't get terrible performance from those three fragrances, even Figo di Amalfi. No, it's not nuclear. No, it's not beast mode. But surprisingly, this one did last a very long time on my skin even. Even though it doesn't really mean much because that dry down definitely is a little bit boring and bland and you are left with that for a long time with the fragrance, it still did perform above my expectations for what kind of fragrance it is and of course being Aqua Di Parma. I actually wore this to sleep one night and when I woke up in the morning, I actually still got the dry down pretty vividly on my skin. So I would say Longevity is around eight hours or so. And as far as projection, projection is actually pretty good with this one too. Maybe because it is very tart, citrus, and a little bit piercing as well. Not piercing in a bad way, just citrus dominant fragrances definitely have that kind of sharp piercing vibe. Um, and that's what actually pushes off the skin very nice and leaves a good scent trail. So uh, as far as projection, I got around maybe two hours tops with it of strong projection and around eight hours of longevity. So right down the middle average, when it comes to performance. At the end of the day, I am very happy to have this part of my collection. It has a perfect spot within all of my bottles. Nothing smells like it that I own, and it will be a perfect fragrance for me in this kind of high heat summer days that we're in now. So I cannot wait to get more wearings out of this one. It would definitely be heavy in my rotation. And Aqua Di Parma is a house that I respect and love so much because of the history, their heritage, and that they've been around over 100 years. And once again, shout out to Tyler for hyping this one up. You were spot on with how good this one is. And I actually am kind of interested in the other ones like the, the uh, Bergamot one, I think Bergamotto or something like that. I might end up checking that one out as well. So yeah, let me know your guys' thoughts of Figo di Amalfi down below. And if you have any experience with anything else from the Blue Mediterranean line, I would love to hear it. But as always, leave a like on the video if you did enjoy it. Subscribe if you guys haven't already, and I'll catch all you guys in the next upload. Take care, everybody.